This is 5 on your side at 10. We begin tonight with more rain moving into the St. Louis area. It follows a dreary afternoon in the central West End. Things looking pretty quiet here on a Saturday night. We want to thank you for joining us. I'm Brent Solomon. Now attend meteorologist Jim Castillo standing by. Jim, how soon could we see that rain? Well, it's it's right on top of the area. It's so nice to see and we're going to continue to see waves of rain throughout the night. Now, some of it's developing even after the sunset, so that's some good news. Uh, we said the best chance of rain would be overnight last night into today. Well, it's continuing now. Here's a look at St. Charles right along I 70 there. A lot of the cars just be careful driving. There's a lot of spray out there with that rain coming down. It's even heavier down to the south around Fredericktown and and now even around Farmington. So we'll watch as that front sag to the south and then moves back to the north as a warm front. So here's just the radar shot. It stays cloudy throughout the night. And again, some of those downpours now following Interstate 70 from west to east right into St. Louis and on into the Metro East. And then again, that heavier rain, there's that uh, spottier uh, downpours all the way from Herman to St. Louis and we'll just move on to the east here right through the city and on into Illinois. It's nice to see. We'll talk more about uh, the rain when it comes to an end and then a huge uh, heat wave coming our way next week. All right, Jim, stay close. You can get the forecast sent to your phone. All you have to do is text the word weather to 314-425-5355. Let's get now to some developing news out of Madison County, Illinois. That's where one person is dead tonight. Another hurt after a plane crashed. It happened just after 1130 this morning near Schaefer Field and new tonight. We're learning more about the victims in that crash. The pilot is 39 year old Buck Martin from Edwardsville. He has life threatening injuries. His co pilot 60 year old Robert Binger from Lake City, Florida died. Police say the plane lost altitude and crashed. The FAA and NTSB are trying to figure out why. Fair St. Louis is taking over downtown this weekend. It started this morning with the 139th annual America's Birthday Parade along Market Street. In fact, five on your side's Mercedes McKay joins us live from Fair St. Louis. Mercedes, you've spent most of the day out there. How's it going? Brent, we're having a lot of fun out here. Obviously, the rain isn't stopping anyone. I think you can see this crowd behind me. The ex-ambassadors just went on about 15 minutes ago, and they are definitely putting on a show. Now, for the past couple of years, COVID-19 has really restricted what the fair can pull off. But now that it's back in full force this year, it's really special to a lot of people. Music-filled Ballpark Village all day Saturday as people came to downtown St. Louis for a 4th of July tradition. We're back and we're ready to uh, ready to have this fair. For Tim Mears, Fair St. Louis is connected to a lot of childhood memories. My grandparents used to bring me down um, and then my parents did and then just throughout the years I enjoyed the fair. Now a full circle moment for Mears as he spends the fair's 41st year as the general chairman. It's just really exciting for me to continue a family friendly event that people can come down to and bring their kids, bring the whole family, have a little something for everyone and really enjoy the weekend. That family friendly aspect is why Aaliyah Heron continues to come back. When you start off as family based, then coming out here and showing there's no negative influences, no bad energy, just being able to see the kids out and enjoy themselves. After years of smaller crowds and restrictions, David Benita says the ability to all be together is something everyone should take in. It's just a, a time to be able to celebrate, you know, that we're able to be out here and be able to just, you know, partake of all of what's happening around here and everything. The fair making a comeback in 2022 means some things are different including the footprint stretching along Keener Plaza and Ballpark Village in downtown and more activities added. We've got the uh, the kid zone. We've got the Purina dogs that are going to come and do the display along with the music. There's there's music playing all weekend long. Whether it's rain or shine, organizers say there's something for everyone to enjoy. Plan your route, come down and have a great time. And the fun will continue through Monday. So everyone at home, you still have time to come on out here now. Something that everybody cares about, those fireworks. That show will be from 9.30 to 10.15 on 4th of July night. Those will be set off right over the river. So 
if you have a view of the arch, you have a great spot for the show. For now, live in downtown St. Louis, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. All right, Mercedes. Well, here's the lineup for Fair St. Louis tomorrow. Bands start playing at noon. That's in Ballpark Village. Now you can watch the Leslie Craig duo, the Yacht Rockers and more. Then tomorrow night, there are four more bands, including Rodney Atkins and Third Eye Blind. That's not it. There's more music Monday with bands playing between four to seven. Then at seven, there's the 90s house party at Keener Plaza with Coolio and Montel Jordan. The fireworks show happens Monday night from 930 until 1015. In fact, there are fireworks shows all around the St. Louis area this weekend. To find a list, just text the word fireworks to 314-425-5355. Well, it's been a weekend of delays and cancellations at airports all across the country, and it comes during what's expected to be a record travel weekend. Connor Powell now with the very latest. Flight cancellations, delays, and packed airports and roads dampening the 4th of July holiday weekend for millions of travelers. And now severe weather could potentially make things worse. I'm just hoping and praying we don't have to deal with it, but we're, we're ready if we do. According to Flight Aware, around 600 flights into or out of the U.S. have been canceled as of Saturday afternoon, with more than 2,600 delays. The Independence Day holiday weekend, predicted to be the biggest travel weekend for the U.S. in years. On Friday, the TSA says it screened nearly 2.5 million passengers. That's the highest number since February 2020, before the pandemic. The lines are a lot longer than they usually are. I think that it's good to leave early. The surge comes as airlines deal with staffing shortages, from pilots to gate agents. Delta issuing a waiver, allowing travelers to change their tickets for free, saying operational challenges are expected this weekend. We're scheduling more flights than we have people to fly them. And now tropical storm Colin pushing towards North Carolina's coast. It's one of several storms across the country threatening to disrupt travel, both in the air and on the roads, as a record number of people traveled by car. It's a holiday weekend. It's going to be great. I'm Connor Powell reporting. And also today, a computer glitch allowed American airline pilots to cancel their scheduled flights. That means thousands of flights could be canceled this month. More fallout in Uvalde, Texas. What the police chief is now doing following growing criticism from that deadly school shooting. As more people grill out, Consumer Reports puts raw meat to the test the alarming results it uncovered. I hope your lawn and gardens had some much needed rain today because it does get drier and hot again. I'll have the new numbers. Developing in North City, police investigating a deadly double shooting. This was the scene at North Sarah and CD Banks Avenue. Officers showed up just before 2.30 this afternoon and found a man and woman inside of a car suffering from being shot. They later died. Homicide detectives are working to figure out how it happened. The Uvalde, Texas school police chief has now resigned his seat on the city council. This comes more than a month after 19 children and two teachers were killed at Robb Elementary School. Pete Arandondo was the on-scene commander. Police were outside of the school for more than an hour while the gunman was inside. Arandondo was sworn into the elected council seat just a week after the shooting. He says resigning is the best decision for the city. Supporters and opponents of abortion rights clashing today in New York City. This comes a week after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Police had to create a barricade between those two groups today. Well, edibles and drinks with THC are now for sale in Minnesota. THC is the ingredient in cannabis that creates a high. Anyone 21 years or older in Minnesota can buy products with up to 5 milligrams per serving. And the law does not limit which retailers can sell those edibles. 
And Brent Herculaneum today, over three and a half inches of rain. Union about two inches. St. Charles, a quarter of an inch. Park Hills, three quarters of an inch. Washington, Missouri, a good half an inch of rain. So there is more heat on the way. I'll talk about it coming up. Grilling has really caught fire since the pandemic, but inflation seems to be putting out the flames. Sales were up in 2020 and 2021, but now they're dropping. The CEO of grill maker Weber says it's because of higher prices on gas and groceries. Traeger grill sales are also down. The grilling industry still thinks outdoor cooking will stay hot. They say the pandemic made people realize they love cooking their own food. With so many people grilling out for the fourth, be sure the food you cook is safe. Tonight, Consumer Reports tests hundreds of samples of ground beef. Here's Mike Bush with what they found. Ground meat has long been a staple in our diets. From hamburgers, meatballs, and meatloafs, Americans bought more than $13 billion worth of ground meat last year. But that love of ground meat comes with a price. It's one of the foods most likely to cause food poisoning. So nearly a third of the ground chicken we tested contains salmonella. Consumer Reports tested 351 samples of ground beef, pork, chicken, and turkey purchased nationwide and found salmonella in samples of each meat. A strain of E. coli was found in a sample of ground beef that's so dangerous that when CR alerted the Department of Agriculture, it triggered a recall of more than 28,000 pounds of the ground beef from major grocery chains in seven states. CR says these findings highlight serious flaws not only in meat production and processing, but also government oversight. The strain of E. coli should not have been found in the meat, period. There is a zero tolerance policy, and for good reason. It can kill, and it is hard to treat. So why is ground meat potentially more dangerous than other types of meat? The answer is in the processing and production. When you buy a steak, that steak comes from one cow. However, when you buy ground beef, that is made up from the meat of many cows. And if one of those meat sources is contaminated, it can contaminate the whole lot, which could be composed of many pounds of ground beef. CR shared its ground chicken test results with producers who had at least one sample test positive. Purdue says only 5.5% of samples it recently spot-checked were positive for salmonella, far lower than the 36% of Purdue samples with bacteria in CR's tests. Walmart said it began a salmonella interventions program in 2014. Whole Foods said it has a quality assurance team that assesses salmonella reports from the USDA. Wholesome Pantry told CR the company holds our suppliers to strict industry standards. In the meantime, when you cook with ground meat, wash your hands in soapy water before you start prepping. Then, after every time you touch raw meat, and again when you're finished. Use a dedicated cutting board just for raw meat. And never guess whether your meat is properly cooked. Use a meat thermometer to make sure it's done. 165 degrees Fahrenheit for ground poultry, 160 degrees for ground pork and beef. Mike Bush, five on your side. All right, Mike, thanks. Well, there's some rainfall in downtown St. Louis. Jim yes. joins us now. We may even see more. And we love to see it. Yes, there's a lot showing up on the radar. I'll uh, show you that coming up. But a lot of people want to know what's going to happen on Monday. So it does look drier and hotter. So 96 for that high and at 9 o'clock uh, Monday night, about 88 degrees. That's incredibly hot. So hot, humid and only a slim chance of a shower or storm. Then Tuesday and Wednesday is dangerous heat. Heat indices as high as 110 and the actual temperature close to 100. That's the jet stream or the storm track. That's what we call that. And that's way up into Canada. So there's a lot of heat building for everybody. The high today, enjoy that. It was 81, 89 for the average high. We're going to be a little bit above that or right at that tomorrow. 74 for that temperature for the loaded Today and 70 is average 27 hundredths the new rain total at Lambert and here it is that that batch of rain developing from Herman through St. Louis and occasionally you get a little bit of yellow or orange in here. Those are some heavier downpours. No lightning being reported yet. Uh, still a chance of that overnight tonight. Uh, then down around Farmington there's a new 
a flash of lightning there. So some thunderstorms popping up here. It's that front that moved through earlier and is lifting back north as a warm front. So a chance of rain tonight. And here's a good downpour south of Creve Corps and right around 270 and 44 here and moving right toward the St. Louis area. So do be careful if you're out and about on the roadways tonight. Very heavy rain now from Farmington southward. So just south of Park Hills all the way to uh, Fredericktown, which in this area today they had a severe storm with some uh, trees coming down. Uh, the only cell that actually had some severe weather today down around the uh, Madison County, Missouri area. So a chance of rain overnight tonight, showers and the possibility of some storms. And then for tomorrow, as we see this front move to the north, as a warm front, uh, we'll still have that chance of rain through the early morning hours, then probably just spotty in the uh, evening and po possibly even just very dry. But here it is that future cast showing that chance of showers and storms overnight into the morning hours. And again, uh, that chance of seeing very dry weather for tomorrow night, and then it gets just dry and hot as we head into Monday. So here it is 10 day forecast, nothing below 90. Monday 96, Tuesday 99, 100 Wednesday, 98 Thursday. So dangerous heat through here, guys. All right, Jim, oh, thanks man. for that. Yeah, hot, hot, and more hot. Man, <laughs> Nolan Arenado for the Cardinals. He's been playing like our weather lately. Coming up in sports, I'm going to show you why the Cardinals were high-fiving like it was back in the 70s. Stick around. We'll see you on the other side of the break. One way to describe the play of Cardinals third baseman Nolan Arenado is like a bull in a china shop. He's destroying everything in his path and is seen red when he's inside of the batter's box. A day after hitting for the cycle, Arenado would kick off the scoring with a two run bomb, his second homer in two nights. Now, someone cue Chris Berman's back, 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 signature home run call because after Arenado, the Redbirds went back to back to back four consecutive home runs all in the first innings the first team to ever do that but the Phillies had to be the no fun police they got after Matthew Libertor he gave up five earned runs in two and the third innings no worries though number 28 had his back in the ninth inning tied at six Nolan unloads on the third pitch he saw for his third home run in two days that would be the dagger the Cardinals take down the Phillies seven to six manager Marmol a word on Arenado please He's been taking really good at bats. Guy's on a mission, and it's uh, you can tell um, he's been uh, he's been coming up real big for us uh, today with the two homers yesterday at the cycle uh, to get that one on Dominguez. That's a big, it's a big at bat. Today, the Blues announced that forward Ale Alexei Torepchenko has undergone shoulder surgery and will miss at least the first two months of the regular season this fall. Also this weekend, general manager Doug Armstrong spoke for the first time since the Avs hosted up the Stanley Cup trophy. I thought it was going to be a great series. It was a great series, but Colorado is a, a very uh, deserving champion. Uh, but I, I'm still proud of our group, and, and I think that we something positive happened to us, something negative happened to them, and that series could change. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, and they scored a, a timely goal in game six that ended, ended our season. But I'm very proud of our group. This 95-degree heat may slow some of us down, but shockingly, it doesn't slow down 85-year-old Misha umpire Jack Fisher. This is his 50th year behind the plate, and he's working more than ever this year. He's on the diamond five days a week and is the oldest umpire in the state. Fisher says he's not slowing down anytime soon, though. Oh, I think some will tell me that uh, I can't do it anymore, and then that'll be it. I'm, uh, no, I'm not... I'm hoping to do softball this fall and I'm hoping to do base, baseball next spring. So we'll see what happens, but uh, uh, I'm getting down towards the end. <laughs> 85 years young. The pride of Marquette, Chris Nagel. A day after logging an eagle in the second round, he's right in the mix after finishing the third round four under par. He's currently tied for sixth at 14 under. He's five shots back from the lead. Now be sure to join us Sunday night for Sports Plus at 1030. I'll be joined by Mizzou football broadcaster Howard Richards to talk all things Tigers football. And we'll also learn the story of East St. Louis's Miles McVay and how his recruiting journey has gone exactly how he and his father envisioned it. All that coming up tomorrow night at 1030. All right, it's going to be exciting. Absolutely. Ahmad, thanks. All right, let's get another check on your weather. Jim. Yeah, so there's rain out there now. Don't worry about uh, severe weather is not expected today or tomorrow, but you may hear some thunder, see some lightning, 
and that's tonight into tomorrow. But look at this 10 day forecast. Wanted to point out that there's nothing below 90 degrees. Mm. So today's 81 was a real nice surprise. And uh, and again, we were expecting 80s, but it was even cooler in the lower 80s. And that was really nice to see. So 90 for Sunday, 96 on Monday, spotty shower or storm, but mainly dry for the fourth. But the heat index is high as 106. And then we're in this dangerous heat for Tuesday, 99 heat indices, 100 to 110 and uh, 100 on Wednesday. All right, so yeah. expect it to be and feel hot. Yes, hydrate, uh, hydrate, hydrate. hydrate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, my friends, that's all of our time at 10. Saturday Night Live is next. Join us for tomorrow. Uh, today in St. Louis, that's tomorrow starting at 6. We'll leave you tonight with some scenes from the America's Birthday Parade. <laughs>